Hello, my name is Adam Downing. I'm with Virginia Cooperative Extension. I'm an extension forester for our Northwest District. Welcome to this segment of 15 Minutes in the Forest. We're not going to be in traditional woods today. We're going to be in the silvo poultry, which is a term I've made up for the integration of silvo trees and poultry chickens. Uh, there is a real word called silvo pasture, and that's any livestock integrated with trees and forage. But in this case, we're going to be looking at chickens, which is a new um, exploration area. So the research that we've been doing, doing looking at silvo poultry, and if uh, it can benefit the production of meat birds. This is not a meat bird. This is a more of an egg laying bird, although it can be consumed. I'm just holding this for a prop, thanks to a friend and a neighbor. So we'll be looking at two different aspects of this research project in this video, and that is the experimental trial that happened at Shenandoah Valley Ag and Research Extension Center. The second part that we'll be taking a look at is a uh, farm trial or field trial at a commercial operation. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm Dr. Leone Jacobs and I'm an assistant professor at Virginia Tech in the Department of Animal and Poultry Sciences. And today we are collecting data for our silvopasture project that was funded by SARE. Last spring we planted some new silvopasture in different plots and these are our control open pasture plots. Okay, so we're doing a tonic immobility test today and that's a test that measures the level of fear in broiler chickens and in other chickens too. So what we do is invert a bird on its back into a cradle. Then we put a little pressure on the sternum and cover its head for about 15 seconds. Then uh, the bird is so fearful that it will go into this tonic state and we measure the latency until it rightens itself. So it will come back up. And the longer the bird will stay down, the more fearful it is. Broiler chicken. So this is the cradle. We'll put it up on the edge. So chickens really don't like this. They will become very fearful. I'm just putting gentle pressure on the chest while covering the head. And it's for about 10 to 15 seconds. was not very fearful because it turned around really quickly. So the bird may look very calm, but it's actually pretending to be dead so that I don't eat it. And this is what they would do for a bird of prey flying over, but it's sort of a last resort. So they'll try and flee. And if they don't see an opportunity for that, they'll go into tonic immobility and pretend to have died from some type of disease. So they're not good prey. We are collecting data on leg strength and that's uh, tested by doing a latency to lie test. In that test we place chickens in a tote with a little bit of lukewarm water and we record how long it takes for them to uh, sit down or lay down. Uh, chickens do not want to lay down in water so they will try uh, at all costs to avoid laying down in the water. So this is a really good objective measure of how strong their legs are because they really try to stay standing as long as they can. Uh, hi, I'm Didur Paneru and I'm a PhD student in the Silver Passer poultry project and uh, we are doing the test here and then we build this group uh, 8 by 8 feet frame and then uh, we put the cattle panels uh, over it and then tarp to protect from the rain for the bars. So we also made like the pots inside the coop so they can sit around and avoid the uh, wet condition if they have some. We have the 100 gallon um, rain barrel on the back so that comes through the gravity uh, works over there and then that comes through the water hose connected to the bell drinker and then the boss will get the water from here and then we have the feeders uh, so each coops has one 
uh, feeder and one drinker. So we have like 53, 54 bars per coop. So we have 12 coops in total, six in open pasture plot and six in single pasture plot. And we open the door at 8 a.m. every day and then close the bars uh, at 5 p.m. so the predators don't get chance to attack our bars. And then we are doing uh, the live observation with the bars uh, to see how far they will range in different system compared to the one over other. One of the measurements we take is looking at range use. So we compare birds using their plots, their uh, fields. And we measure that for six days in total, so in the last two weeks of life. And what we see when we compare open pasture to silvo pasture is that the silvo pasture birds range further and more birds range into the plots. So just to summarize the outcomes of these experiments, we see that in most of our measurements, silver pasture access improved the outcome. So we saw reduced fear, we saw uh, improved foodbed dermatitis, we saw improved hog burns, meaning foodbed dermatitis was less severe, hog burns were less severe in the silver pasture compared to the open pasture system. In the one experiment, we saw that gait was actually worsened in the silver pasture, but not different in the second experiment. Uh, and we saw that range use was improved in the silver pasture system, even though birds stayed relatively close to the coop still. We did not see a difference in carcass yield or live body weights in these experiments. And it is important to note that overall the outcomes, especially the animal welfare outcomes, were exceptional in both groups. And today we're at a commercial broiler chicken farm that's organic. And organic means that besides that they get organic feed that's not treated with pesticides, it means that birds also have to have access to the outdoors. And there are some conditions to this access. So part of it is that the weather has to allow it. So it shouldn't be too cold or too hot outside. Um, another is that the birds are old enough. So it differs a little bit, but it can be from three or four weeks of age. And uh, we see some birds out here today, right now. It's relatively early in the morning. It's getting a little hotter now. And birds will start moving inside because as we don't like too much heat, broiler chickens don't like too much heat either. These broiler chickens you see here, they um, are about six weeks of age. So they're almost ready for processing. Uh, so they're quite young, but what they do, do and, and enjoy doing is foraging as I said uh, they they will explore they'll play they'll, they'll have social interactions a lot of their behaviors uh, is socially facilitated which means that if one bird performs a certain behavior other birds are sort of uh, stimulated to st show it too so for instance dust bathing where they sort of take their shower uh, that's a social behavior and you'll see a bunch of birds together showing that behavior at the same time so these birds at this commercial farm are a conventional strain, which means that they are a fast growing strain. It's a Cornish cross and this is the most used bird for meat production anywhere in the world. Uh, and part of this genetic strain is that they are genetically selected, so not modified, they're selected to grow quickly and gain a lot of muscle in a short period of time. And this means that they're really efficient, so they won't take or need a lot of feed to grow a lot of muscle. Part of their genetics also means that they grow a lot of body, but uh, their feather growth is a little bit delayed. So you'll see some bare patches on these birds. And that's just because they're transitioning from down to real feathers. This is completely normal for this strain. So these uh, metal structures are here to provide some uh, protection for the birds. Chickens, including broiler chickens, are a prey species, so they're generally fearful to be eaten by a predator. So giving them these shade structures will allow them to hide from potential predators. It gives them a sense of safety and it'll be more comfortable for them to go outside. Besides that, they really don't like extreme weather conditions. So they don't like it too hot, they don't like it too cold, they don't like rain. 
and these shade uh, structures will protect them from that also. Uh, some research has shown that they prefer natural protection, so like from trees or bushes or any plants, over these artificial shade structures. And of course it can differ very much between the type of structures you provide, and we see here on this farm that they use the shade structures quite well. But they'll always prefer uh, natural shades over artificial. So this is another uh, house at the same organic broiler chicken farm. And uh, here you see that there's a little less natural shelter, so there are not as many trees or scrubs as in the other field. There are some of those metal shelters, but there are maybe fewer than in the other one that we've seen. So here you see that there's fewer birds outside. This bird, it's a probably a male, uh, is about three, four weeks old right now. And one thing that we can look at to determine their health and well-being is to look at their food pads. So what we want to see is a very soft skin. So this one looks really healthy. Uh, the, the food pad is soft. We don't see any lesions, any necrosis on the food pads or on the toes. So this bird has really healthy feet. So another uh, important indicator for bird health and bird welfare is their gait. Gait is just a, a word to describe how they walk. And it's a, an indicator for lameness. So one of the more prevalent welfare issues in border chickens, especially the birds that grow relatively quickly, is that they'll have, uh, they can get an impaired gait or become lame just because they're so heavy, maybe there's some issues with bacterial infections, maybe there's something else, but if birds are unable to walk, they're unable to reach feed and water, so that's not good for productivity, but the bird are, birds are also in pain, so it's uh, not comfortable for them either. Just uh, as a reminder, tonic immobility durations tells us something about fear with longer durations showing that birds are more fearful. So if we compare the open pasture to the silvo pasture treatment, we see that birds in the open pasture treatment were more fearful because their tonic immobility duration was longer compared to birds in the silvo pasture treatments at this farm. Um, and this is sort of reflected nicely in this picture too, that was made while uh, the students were collecting the data in the open pasture house on the top. You can see that birds kept quite a distance from the data collection that was going on. While in the, the house that had access to silver pasture, birds were much more curious and comfortable to come closer and check out what was going on. So to summarize from these two flocks, we found that fear and gait were improved in the silver pasture treatments, but footbed dermatitis and life weight outcomes were worsened in the silver pasture treatment. So really uh, not a consistent benefit found of silver pasture access at this large scale farm, but keep in mind, these are just two flocks. Uh, that were compared. So it's not as uh, scientifically confirmed yet. We are intending to collect data from more flocks to just make sure that these results are consistent and are not just related to the one flock in that treatment. What our overall findings are for this project and especially the, the animal measurements, we really see uh, regardless of experiments, large scale farm or small scale farm, we see a benefit of silver pasture in terms of fear. Either fear is reduced or the same, depending on the, the situation or the experiments. Uh, depending on uh, where we measured it, gates was either improved. In some cases, there was no difference in gates. And in some cases, gate was a little worsened in the silver pasture treatments. It, only in that one experiment. Leg strength really didn't differ between the treatments uh, and was good in all treatments. So there was not, not a great benefit of silver pasture on this aspect. We mainly saw benefits of silver pasture on foot pad health with lower foot pad dermatitis scores in most cases. And in one case, we saw worsened foot pad dermatitis 
uh, in the silver pasture treatment compared to the open pasture treatments. Generally, hog, hog health was improved or did not differ between the treatments. And we saw mixed results for the body weight or yields results with either improved, no difference, or worsened yields uh, in result of the silver pasture treatments. 